Welcome back to D20 Tactics. On this channel, I play Dungeons & Dragons with my friends, and we explore combat scenarios and play out the tactics used to defeat monsters quickly and safely, giving you more time to get back to roleplaying. I'm your host and Dungeon Master, Sarson Zero, and today I'm joined by Blind Oracle, Fear No Equal, Azure Wolf, and Longfish. Together we'll run through typical battles that adventurers might see playing Dungeons & Dragons. This is the third encounter in an IB Slayer, so if you missed the start, you can find a link to it in the description below. Grab your dice, draw your sword, and let's jump into combat. Hit points, abilities, spells, items in hand. 139 out of 139 hit points, holding a plus two short bow, using plus one arrows, and my instrument of the bards still has all spells remaining strung on my back. One charge remaining on the Wand of Magic Missile. 110 hit points, four first level, one second, three third, three fourth, two fifth, one sixth. 172 of 172 hit points. I have Second Wind and Action Surge uh, available once again, and two uses of Indomitable. And I still have my two Circlets of Blasting, one on my head, one in my pocket. Well, 18 out of 138 hit points, holding my plus two shield and Staff of Pytho. Uh, I have three level one, three level two, two level three, two level four, two level five, and one level seven spell slots remaining. I have both charges of my channel divinity back. Monsters, abilities, items, and numbers. This is going to be an interesting fight, I think. A creak of a door, a scrape of stone, a snap of a branch. You're not sure what's in this room, but you're certain that there's something here. You're aware of enemies, but you don't know where they are. Anybody have a passive perception better than 28? All right. Anybody have a passive perception better than 24? Okay. Anybody have a passive perception better than 12? Yes. Yes. Hi. You're aware of the existence of a single assassin behind the door to the south. They're trying to hide from you, but they are unsuccessful. Assassins have a number of interesting abilities. During their first turn, they have advantage on attack rolls against any creature that hasn't taken a turn yet. They have evasion, just like the rogue does. They also have sneak attack, just like the rogue. They have multi-attack with their two short swords, and they have additional poison damage on that short sword. How do we feel about poison damage? Whee! What? Phenomenal. Hit me again, <laughs> daddy. <laughs> yeah, light crossbows have the loading property, so they can't use multi-attack with the light crossbow. They have a passive perception of 13, a maximum perception of 23, so rogue, you can just take half. There are two additional assassins in this room. One is hiding behind the door over here. The other one is hiding next to the statue here. All right, that's fun. Terrain. Another straightforward terrain encounter. There's a lot of tunnels here. Interestingly, there are four doors. They're marked with black lines, not just on the terrain layer, but on the map itself. The doors are currently closed. If you wish to open them, you can, and the black lines will disappear. There's a couple of pieces of difficult terrain spread around the map, things that you can hide behind. You can completely crawl over all the statues if you want to, though they are difficult terrain to do so. Tactics, what do you guys think for tactics in this fight? Well, we only have the one enemy, so. I think we stay split up and cover the two doors that they can access us from. Once we can identify where they are, then we just mob them fast. You want haste there, fighter? How many casts do you have of haste? I have a bunch of scrolls, dude, so let's use them up. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, do it. If that's that, let's go ahead and jump into combat. Roll initiative. Hey. Anybody have higher than a 20? 24.5. Anybody have between a 20 and a 15? 15 on the fighter. Who's got between a 15 and a 10? 13 on the owl, 9 on the wizard. 8 for the assassin. And cleric, what do you got? 1. You're... I mean, the thing is, like, it's mostly determined by the d20, and somehow you're always rolling terrible on these. Just wants to go first in the second round, that's all. The rogue, you're up first. I don't really have any great play here. The door is closed, right? The southern door is closed. The black lines are closed to doors. You cannot see through them. Bonus action to hide, taking 10 for 25. And ready action to attack the first enemy I see. Do you want to move so you have a better line of sight? If I can do that, that'd be great. I can be inside a friendly square that's larger than me, yeah? You cannot stop inside of anybody else's square, friendly or enemy. One east. After the rogue, we go to the fighter. I'm gonna do it right this time. Two spaces to the southeast, and ready my gem of brightness to blind the first enemy that I see. Interesting, okay. After the fighter, we go to the owl. He's gonna call dodge. After the owl is the wizard. Wizard's gonna pull out a scroll of haste and tap that fighter with it. Fighter, you're jumping around, hopping mad. Caffeine. After that, we go to the assassin. Nobody knows this, but an assassin is gonna move. He needs to do somersaults like the Marines. Cardboard box. But does he do parkour? Another assassin's going to move. Then the other one's going to ready an action to stab somebody if they come within range. After that, we're going to go to the cleric. Cast third level spirit guardian, nominate all my friends as allies. 
and because the rogue is hidden behind you, you can still see him. After that, we're gonna go to the rogue. Uh, the fighter's probably gonna move. Play it back. Bonus action hide. Ready to shoot the first enemy I see. After the rogue, we go to the fighter. Yeah, let them make the first move here. Step to the southwest and continue readying this gem of brilliance. After the fighter, we go to the owl. He's gonna continue to dodge. Wizard. I'm going to dodge because concentration on a spell is gonna drop haste. This assassin's gonna peek the door. He is not stealth to you guys. You're able to perceive him through his stealth. Starting with the top of the initiative, Rogue, you have something for me. 25 to hit. 25, that'll connect. For 45 points of damage. And then the next one, I think, Fighter. DC 15, con save versus blindness doesn't look good. He gets a 10, so he gets blinded. He's going to charge the fighter, and he's going to dodge. That's that guy. He gets another save at the end of his turn against the blindness. Oh, thank you. That one. The next assassin is going to open the door and pop out. I don't think there's any ready actions remaining. It is hidden, so it has advantage on this attack. It's going to shoot the fighter. 22 to hit your fighter. That'll do. 1d8. All the poison is going to get ignored, and 4d6 sneak attack. 20 points of piercing damage, and just for posterity, 29 points of poison damage gets ignored. <laughs> three to there, so it's going to move three back. Then the next assassin is going to appear. It is also hidden, so it's going to go, it's going to take a shot at the fighter, advantage because of the stealth. 21 to hit you. That'll hit. What are you nailing those 21s? Another 20 points of piercing damage, and 22 points of poison damage gets ignored. Then it's going to move to there, close the door, and then do something that you don't know about. Then after that, we're going to go to the cleric. Run over to the door that's just closed, open it, and then walk through two spaces. Do I see with those two, or do we only see one of them? They're no longer hidden. They've used their attack action to break their hide. Okay. Action to use the python. Ooh, I have to throw it within 10 feet. Oops. That's not good. The snake is not a friend. Wait, what? No, it, it it listens to your... It's not for purposes of spirit guardians. The snake is not immune to it, that's true. It's an action, you got a bonus action, you get there. I'm good there. Bonus action, apologize to snake. Snake's initiative is 19. You also didn't issue an order to the snake. It's gonna constrict the last guy. After the cleric is the rogue. Let's see if we can clean up that bottom corner. He's dodging. Yes, but he's in melee with a friend that he's blind, therefore it flat dice. Yes, that's true. It's flat dice, but it's no sneak because he's dodging. But he's in melee with a friend. If you have any disadvantage, you don't get sneak. Or I can shoot the guy next to me. Yeah, the door's open. That's the actual play there. Bonus action hide, taking the 10 for 25, move down, shoot the guy next to Longfish. Let's shoot the Longfish, save the snake. 27 to hit. 27 connects. 41 points of damage. Move around, hang out. Let's back up one and turn. Give me the constrict attack roll. Hang on, snake's not friendly and is starting its turn in the zone. Check, fail, eat my own 3d8 damage. Snake is going to take 10 damage flat. Constrict 30 20 to hit. Hits. 2d8 plus 4 for 14 damage total. And the target is grappled. Escape DC 16 until the grapple ends. The creature is restrained and the snake cannot constrict another target. We go to the fighter. Gonna go ahead and attack this fella next to me. Straight dice because he's blind, but dodging. That's a crit. You know, there's only so much I can do. For 27 damage. Second attack. That's a hard miss. Third attack. 18 to hit. Hits. 18 damage as well. 18 is lethal. Can I go northeast of the cleric, or is that taken by the snake? That is taken by the snake. All right, then I will go northwest of the cleric and use my haste attack on this fellow. And that is also a crit. Might as well be. For 23 damage. Gotta pay you back for putting them down. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> After the fighter, we go to the owl. Move south of the fighter and give the rogue advantage. After the owl, we go to the wizard. I'm going to jump down one because I'm going to get two line of sight there. Seize up my last second level slot for a missile. Uh, three? Three plus one is four. Four plus five is nine. Nine times four is 36. He's going to take 36 points of damage and drop. Continue to move diagonal one and over one. That way the rogue can get in there. After the wizard is the assassin. Assassin's going to start its turn off in the zone. Wisdom 18. Fail. Take 12 damage. Then it's going to stab the snake. Ooh. Who stabs a harmless giant boa constrictor? <laughs> Assassins. So he's restrained. When the assassin is restrained, the assassin has disadvantage on attacks. Not one to hit, and the other one is a 16 to hit the snake. 16, well hit. Give me a DC 15 constitution save on the snake. Roll a 15 on the nose, plus 116 total. Snake's going to take four points of piercing damage and 
10 points of poison damage. That's the end of the assassin's turn, cleric's turn. Sacred Flame on the assassin. Anyone know if Restrain gives disadvantage on dex saves? Yes, it does. Dex 18. 10 fails. And 11 damage. I will... One, two, three, four. I can't squeeze through the snake. It's going to be problematic for you to move this snake because you're so slow, but you can move through it at half speed. Yeah, I'll just stay there. After the cleric is the rogue. Wow, that's a messy shot. Do I even have the movement on the four? Barely. Yeah, so let's move on the diagonal to the southeast and then take a shot at the remaining assassin. It's restrained, so you have advantage. 19 to hit. 19, that's 40. Flat. Bonus action is going to be to move one square north and hide. 25. After the rogue, we go to the snake. Snake starts to turn off in the zone. Snake made a 19 on the wisdom check. Hey, look at you go, snake. And I'm only eating half of the 3d8, which is a 11. Half of 11 is 5, so 29 damage now. And I'm going to bite. Advantage because of the restraint. 26 to hit. Hits. Ooh, that's a crit. 16 damage. 16 is lethal. The last assassin drops and the encounter ends. Are you going to keep spirit guardians going for the next fight? Yes. Okay. I will end the snake, though. End the snake, yeah. Leaving the spirit guardians long enough, it will be ended. Report hit points. 139 out of 139. 132 out of 172. 110 out of 110. 118 out of 138. As usual, I beasts have an eclectic collection of monsters guarding their dungeon, and this one seems to be no exception. Three assassins down, plenty more to go before they find the final boss. Three encounters down, three more to go before the long rest. Thank you for stopping by, and I hope you'll join us next week as the adventure continues. I'm Sarson Zero, and I will see you next time.